Before you guys want to click away and think this is another farming YouTube channel, you're not going to want to miss today's episode. And that's because I'm going to be putting all of our technology on full display and seeing how many times I physically need to drive the steering wheel across this 80 acre field that we're planting soybeans into. To start planting at this field, we need to start at the headland portion or the outside rows on the field. And I think you guys, by the end of the video, will be surprised how few of times I'm actually going to end up touching the steering wheel at this field for planting. Just had our first time touching the steering wheel of actually going to plant. That was for me to back up into the corner so we get our headlands nice and straight. Now I just need to drop the planter and start going down until we get to the other end of the field. We're planting. I haven't had to touch the steering wheel since, since I created all the boundaries around all of our fields last fall. So I have a guidance line that steers it from end to end, for sure on the headlands, but then I have to back it in and turn it around to get onto the next guidance line like we're about to do now. The headlands are always the hardest part of the field, which makes sense why we're having to use the steering wheel so much, just because not all the roads are straight, not all the field boundaries are straight, so for me to get the tractor lined up and in the spot I need it, it takes a lot of manual driving like we're doing now. Finished another outside portion of the headland. Now gonna take the wheel again back into our next line, bringing up our counter to three already. The boundaries around all of our fields are working to run the planter with, but I'm realizing that I should have taken more into account where I wanted the first row to be. Because if you look out there, my first row is a little bit too far into the ditch and I'd rather there be about a 10 inch gap between the grass and my first row where now it's about a half inch gap. Which means I'll more than likely end up after this fall going around mapping a bunch of our fields again, trying to refine how far away exactly I want that first row to be from the ditch, maybe drop another chain from a cable or something, just so I know when it comes to the planter and I'm inside here where that first row is gonna be because I'm not in love with it being a little bit too far into the ditch. I just had to back up into another intersection portion of the field to get on our new guidance line to bring us back to the edge of the field where we started. So that's gonna bring our counter up to four. When we get down there, that'll bump us up to five. And then I wanna put another 24 rows around the outside edge of the field. So I'm already gonna bump our counter up to 10. And then when we start going in the back and forth portion, of the field, I think that's where you guys will really be impressed to see how few of times I really have to touch a steering wheel in here. The headland portion of this field is done. Our counter is still at 10. We're just about started to get going on the main back and forth portion of this field. And this is where I think you guys are in for a real treat. But before we do, I want to double check our depth here on some of these soybeans that we're planting into. Shooting for about inch, inch and a half deep. But once we get going in this planter, I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are on some of the technology that we're going to be running in inside that cab. Just starting to make the first interior pass of the field, and since this field isn't perfectly square, we're going to have a few point rows or a spot of the field just right of where I'm planting right now, where not all the rows of the planter are going to be going. So I'm going to want to set that up to get the planter to turn around at the end so we can pick those up first. Coming to the end here, I got it programmed. It should start to pick the planter up once we cross five feet. And it's starting to turn. The planter has been raised. I got one hand on the camera so I can't show you both hands at the same time. But there's the next track. It's gonna take the planter down. It's still turning, still turning. It's also controlling the speed inside the computer. It lowered the planter and now if I show you on here, we should be planting again. There we go. If it's your first time seeing technology like this in action, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below because I'm going to have a lot more cool things I want to show and want you guys to be a part of on the channel. But now, let me give you one more demonstration of how this technology works and really sell it to you on how it really controls everything inside the tractor and how I'm basically hands-free when I'm going back and forth in the interior portion of the field.
So what John Deere calls this technology of turning and raising the planter or whatever implement you want to use it on is auto track turn automation. So if we click on the auto track turn automation here inside the display, you can see here some of the settings that I needed to enter all the measurements for the tractor and the planter into. That way it makes the perfect light bulb turn that I like to see every time and it makes the perfect aggressiveness so that the tractor wheel never bumps into the frame or the hitch on the planter. If you're anything like me, you're probably wondering, so if the planter raises, lowers itself, puts seed in the ground, does everything basically but the headlands like you want, why do you even have to be in the seat? And honestly, in my lifetime, there'll be a day, I fully believe, that I won't be in the seat of the planter when it's planting. But let's talk about why I'm in the seat today and what the steps need to be to get from where the technology is today to the next step of taking me out of the seat of the cab. So when I'm, I guess I would use the word riding since I'm not really driving from end to end hardly ever, what I'm doing is I'm looking out front, making sure there's no large rocks or obstacles I need to get out of the way that could damage the planter. And then I'm also monitoring all of our displays here, making sure our seating population and our downforce or how much weight we're putting down on the seat trench is all correct. But reality is, Many of these things I can already view on my phone remotely, whether I'm sitting in the cab of the planter itself, or whether I'm sitting at the farm in the office working on something, I can view all this stuff from the phone already. We are now coming up on a tile intake. You can see the pin there, the flag there, which means I'm gonna have to move our counter up another one. So now we're at 11 times I've had to touch the steering wheel because I need to move the intake out of the way and the back planter up to plant through it. drive this out and I didn't hit GPS oh. those doors aren't gonna be straight here you can see the little blank spot I left in the field with the planter that should be very recognizable when we come back with the combine as much as I wish this wouldn't have happened especially in this field when I keep it tracked we had one roll that stopped planting, so I gotta take over the wheel now, back up and try to catch that roll back in. You can see here, for some reason, it was row number 22, decided not to plant, so I'm gonna back, back to the beginning of this pass, try to fill that little bit in, and hopefully row number 22 starts to work. Otherwise, we'll hop back outside and see if what's going on. Trying to back up and go ahead, didn't make row number 22 seem to work. So now I had to touch the steering wheel again. We're at 13, but we're out here at lucky number 22 row unit. Gonna slap this off, see what's maybe going on inside the meter, what's causing us issues. I figured it out without even having to take the meter off. It's a very easy fix, at least I hope. There's a little prong on this plug that isn't seated correctly. So I just need to push him in a little bit like that. Now it's held on by that lip. So we should always keep power at the meter. Well, that was the fix because we're now filling in just row number 22 here on the map. We just crossed the 50 acre mark of planting at this field, which means I needed to take the steering wheel, bringing us up to count number 14 because we had to back into the ditch to start loading up some more soybeans. is loaded up now my brother was the one that came out with the seed tender to load me up and I actually let him take over I thought since I got all the technology working and I'll be riding along in the cab just monitoring making sure everything's going along Matt how do you think it's going yeah uh, you got it set up so well it's so easy a caveman can do it so yeah I don't know about that everybody thinks it's all easy when you get in but you got to take all the measurements you got to make sure all your GPS stuff is set up correct so it definitely seems easy when everything's working smooth like it is here now that brother's here, but I don't think he'd be well equipped to set it up at the beginning of the season like I did. Now done planting this 80 acre field. I didn't tell my brother Matt how many times it took me to touch a steering wheel. I didn't even tell him that that was the video that I was going for. So how many times do you think it took me that I actually took the steering wheel in this 80 acre field between the headlands, going to fill the planter, and the intakes. Start to finish, I'm gonna guess 
20 times. 20 times, pretty close. Final count, 14. Wow. So, very similar on what it'd be on the rest of the fields. Just takes about 10 to do the headlands, then depending on how many intakes we have, driving around those. And then like you saw, any issues we have with the planter, always got to back up and re-catch those rows. So, not as hands-on as what you might have thought. I got switched over to the second field I want to get done today and I'm having a heck of a time. This one's got a building site around it and what the tractor wants me to do is to kind of angle around the building site but I want a nice square corner off at this building site so I've had to handle the steering wheel a dozen times already and I'm also having problems on the other side of the field where I created my GPS boundary line for some reason it shifted. So now I have corn planted into soybeans or soybeans rather planted into corn. So, so far that first field was kind of a gimme. That's why I started the video there and the second one is not going well at all. It's frustrating because I took a lot of time to hook up the GPS to our Ranger, drive around all the outsides of the fields with the hope of being able to not have to slow down, not have to steer, use the marker going around the outside edge of the field. And as much, honestly, as I would love to take the globe off this tractor right now, put it on the Ranger back at the farm and drive around the field and make sure that there's not something wrong on my end and see what the issue is. The reality is we just don't have time. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, the day after that. And we still got 300 acres of soybeans to plant. So I just had to put the marker down, use the steering wheel a lot more on this field and hopefully try to figure out the issue to improve on what I need to do to make those things work for next year. It might not seem like a big deal during the day when you want to plant the outside edge of the field because you can use your markers, but at night when it's super dark, it's hard to make sure that that outside row on the planter doesn't hit any obstacle that's on the border of the field. And that's where it'd be nice to have my boundaries working like they should. On the bright side, I did get the turn automation going in our planter tractor this spring, which is controlling it, as you guys have seen, from end to end of the field. But there is one new thing John Deere is coming out with for next year that I would like to try. That being furrow vision. With today's technology, the only way for me to see the furrow or that being the trench where the actual seeds are placed in the soil is to get a seed finder or a pocket knife and to do a little bit of digging, and see what things are looking like in the trench. But with furrow vision, there's actually cameras in between our disc openers that can look and live stream camera feeds up to the cab of the tractor so I can know my real-time actual planning instantaneous depth on every row of my planter with this new thing called furrow vision. That is about all I know about furrow vision, having read about it and learning about it the last few days, but I do believe that it might come out as a performance upgrade kit, meaning we might be able to add it to this planter for next season. So if you guys felt like you learned something in this video, please give it a thumbs up and we'll see ya in the next one.